Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to talk about an interesting development in the college basketball coaching world that people have speculated could have ramifications for Southeastern Conference basketball coaching jobs, and that is Louisville's parting with Chris Mack that could happen at any time. By the time you see this, it may have happened. First of all, I don't think anybody expected this to go wrong the way it did. Mack had been great at Xavier, and it just hasn't worked at Louisville. It's it's fallen dramatically in the last two years. Before we get into names, I do want to hit one quick thing because it occurred to me last night. This is kind of the norm for football now in a lot of ways is you get ADs trying to get out ahead of the field. And maybe it's different because you've got recruiting things in football and, and play and, and early signing periods and stuff. So it's not apples to apples, but you don't often see that I can think of, Blake, openings coming this early in the cycle where you're not even halfway through conference play and you're moving on from a coach. Yeah, sometimes I think relationships just get to the point where it's like, why wait? You know, yeah. and I think it is it is not something you see in basketball a lot. Um and it seems like, you know, obviously, you know, we're not going to say things we don't know. But if you just kind of read between the lines here, it just seems like this got to the point to where it's there's there's no point of, you know, being able to just drag this on when you know yeah. it's probably going to happen. And it's like at that point, maybe just go ahead and do it because, um, you know, I, I saw people arguing for both directions and it's no matter the team. I think it's. You can look at it one way of, okay, if all parties know that there's going to be a change, who benefits from keeping things the same for, for another month and a half? Um, probably no one. Um, and so I think that's probably how I would look at it, and it is something that you just don't see a whole lot. So, I mean, listen, and we're going to get into it in a second, but it's this is a big job. I think the question becomes huge. how big of a job is this in relation to the people that are going to be the top candidates. And I think that's where the big discussion is had uh, because like it or not, this is a program with a lot of history, a lot of tradition. Um, and there are high expectations, right? I mean, it's, you know, you, you understand the challenge at Louisville and now, you know, you, you are going to go for the best of the best. And as we've talked about with sec basketball, would it surprise any of us if there are high profile SEC coaches that are on Louisville's list? Of course not, because that's where the league has gotten yeah. to now in the SEC is you've built programs to the national level to where there are always, you know, when we had this discussion, right, with with North Carolina and all these others, it's like who, you know, we talk about like the names that are mentioned for North Carolina and people are throwing around these names. It's like, wait a minute, those are SEC basketball coaches. And it's like because that's where that's the where the league to. has gotten. Yeah. Right. And the profile automatically gets higher. And now I think the discussion becomes what, which one's better. And I know people on the outside are going to laugh about this and be like, well, hold on a second. Like you can't compare some of the guys we're going to talk about in a second to being at schools that don't have the tradition or the history. Yeah. I think at a certain point though, it's like, okay, but right now, where are the programs? And I think you can make the argument that there are some programs that are ahead of where Louisville is right now, um, you know, from, from that standpoint. And so yeah. I think it, it's always fascinating when this type of job becomes available because that's where it's it comes down to a lot of different little elements that are going to make up who the eventual hire is. And I'm pretty fascinated to see how it unfolds. Well, if you back off from a where is everybody right now standpoint? I guess your big four jobs in college basketball are Duke, Carolina, Kentucky, Kansas probably. Am I leaving anybody out? You might say UCLA. I'm not as sure. But, I mean, after that, Louisville is probably certainly a top ten job, maybe the next one that you come to after you've exhausted those few. Right, and we're basing that off of the tradition and the history right. and, and what those programs have accomplished and the fan bases and – um, you know, I think venues always go into play too, as we talk about in college basketball, that's always something that, um, play plays a role. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, you can, you know, you can throw different ones in there and I think you just look at it and kind of realize that there are, there are certain jobs that are viewed a different way because of, because of that, because of the tradition, the history, the expectation, um, you know, what is possible, right? Like these, these are programs that have realized what is possible. They've gotten to the top. And as we always mention, right, it's 
like I said, we keep making the thing about South Carolina. It's like, you know, the best thing they could have done is get to the final four. The worst thing they could have done is get to the final four, because that only raises the expectation now to where, okay, we know it can happen. Why can't that happen all the time? And I don't think that's realistic anymore in this day and age in college basketball. the, the, The landscape has changed way too much, but that's how the expectation is built is once you prove it can happen, then that's our only acceptable outcome is for us to be at that level and not go down. And right. There's only, only one person can be number one. And so, yeah, I think that's where, that's where this is going to get interesting because I have no doubt in my mind and let's just go ahead and put it out there. Obviously there's been a lot of speculation already on Twitter about, I just want to point that out on Twitter because not, not us, (laughs) not, not reports, not like none of it's just speculation, which we all do with coaching curves. It's fun to think about, right? Like we, we have fun with this, but yes, there has been speculation that someone like Bruce Pearl, someone like uh, Nate Oates, uh, coaches like this, who, as we just talked about, have had a lot of success at where they are at, you know, at Auburn, at Alabama. People are already saying that Louisville is going to have interest in these guys. Well, here's what I would say to you, Chris. Why wouldn't they have interest in these guys? Yeah. Right? know, it's like, why wouldn't you? Um, now, I know we, we talk about Alabama struggles this year and all that, but if you just look at the trajectory of the programs, yeah. um, of course you would have interest in these kind of coaches. But that's where the conversation becomes, okay, is the interest one way or is the interest both ways, right? And it's like, yeah. we don't know the answer to that, and, and we won't know the answer to that uh, because there's here. that's where it goes back to your point. It's the end of January. Like, it's not mid-March or early April. Like, we're not in that coaching carousel peak season. Like, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're still in the middle of a season here. So... Um, so I think all those discussions probably need to be put off for a while because I I don't think right now anyone could say that, yes, I would have zero doubt. And I think, you know, Will Wade was one of the others that was mentioned and and that's, you know, and Kenny Payne was another one who's been speculated. (laughs) Which you think about it, right? Like all those guys have SEC ties (laughs) because Kenny Payne was in Kentucky and it's just, it's crazy to think about, but yes, of course, like coaches that have had, that have had success are going to be mentioned for some of the most successful coaching jobs in America. I yeah. would be surprised uh, otherwise, right? And I think, though, it's just way too early to go down that road of, you know, what's going to happen with this and could this coach consider that? Um, and I know, you know, again, Auburn fans, Alabama fans, uh, other fan bases are already, you know, giving their thoughts on and on social media and everything. But I just think this is a conversation that is just, it's it's one that we're going to have now for a couple months because you know this is a rare coaching change at a pro high profile school in the middle of a season uh but it's just yeah i think it's going to be interesting to look at okay here's two sides to this coin okay and people can push back on where louisville falls in the pecking order but let's look at when chris mack took that job he had been super successful at xavier that was a program that seemed like it was in the sweet 16 every year sometimes the elite eight He'd been to umpteen straight tournaments, I think. He was a Xavier grad. Like, that's one of those don't mess with what's working things, and and he saw fit to to leave. And I don't know how much pause he had to do it. So that's the attractiveness of the job. And I think the name that's going to come up of all those, because he's the hot name, is Bruce Pearl. But Pearl is, what, 61 Pearl is also, and I never, I never like to make, and I've heard Gary Parrish say this too. You just never know what's important to a guy, right? Do, do you like yes. the town you're in? Do you like the situation? How are things with your family? Have you moved enough to where you don't want to deal with it anymore? If I'm Bruce Pearl, I'm, I'm thinking through this. Okay, if if you go to Louisville, and we're not saying that he is. I mean, it's been reported he'd love to have the job. Who, who knows? I don't know, and you don't know, and we're going to be really clear about that. But let's just say for a minute, with his name in the mix, if you're Bruce Pearl, I've got to be thinking, okay, if I go to Louisville, I'm, I'm sort of another guy. They've had Denny Crum. They've had Rick Pitino. You've had guys who've won national titles there, and you're, you're another one of those guys. At Auburn, they're on the precipice of, of doing some huge things. I've already done one huge thing with the Final Four. They could win a national title this year. Uh, if not this year, yeah. then then maybe in their near future. You do that at Auburn, 
they're going to build a statue to you, and you're going to lend cachet to that basketball program that carries a long time after you're gone. And I don't know how you articulate what you call all that, but I think it has to play into it, don't you? Chris, he's got the number one team in the country right now. Right. He's got the best team in college basketball. I don't like, and here's where, like you said, and you, that was the best thing you you could have said about this. You don't know what the motivation is for certain. You, You don't know. And let's be honest, when that number of money gets higher and higher and higher, like there's always going to be an incentive there, right? Like you, that, that can be a pull for some people and say, okay, maybe that's something that if that number gets to that certain point, it's like, well, I'd be crazy not to at least entertain that idea. But my thing is he has the number one team in the country right now. And do you, I think it's like, we have to understand the, the fallout from that when you are the number one team in the country and you know, we're not saying they're going to win the national championship, but if they're the number one team in the country right now, they're at least going to be in that discussion. Um, so the fallout is you've, you've put this program on top of college basketball to this point right here, right now. And it's like, at, at why, a place where it hasn't mattered to, right. And it's like, why, why go backwards? And I don't mean right. And, and, and again, I'm sorry, but it's like I don't mean that from a standpoint of, you know, you compare the the level of the jobs historically. Historically, Louisville's a better basketball job, but right now, it's like you've built the number one team in the country, and I just and I sort of look at it that way. As though, if you look at it that way, it's like okay, why would I walk away from perhaps what is becoming a perennial top five, top ten team? Yeah. you know, to do something different. Now, you know, the Chris Beard example, right? I mean, he yeah. built Texas Tech into a team that gets to the national championship, and they're right there at the top. But he looks over and says, well, maybe this, you know, historically, for, from a, from a, a standpoint of what can I do in the future and be able to build in the future, maybe Texas is a better spot for me, right? So I think there's always different examples you can use, but I um, I think we are at the point now to where we are in pure speculation mode uh, yeah, with, totally. with some of these possibilities. And and like I said, why is that? It's because you've had coaches that have you know done what Bruce Pearl's done at Auburn. Um, you know some of these others. You know that that have built these kind of programs in the SEC. And so I am never surprised anymore when these top jobs become available. And you start hearing coaches from the SEC being mentioned because that's the the raising of the profile of the league. And I think that's just going to continue. And, hey, it may not be something fans want to hear if you're, you're an SEC school, but if you've got yourself a good coach, which a lot of these schools seem to have now, it just comes with the territory. So. Well, and let me let me give you a, a, another sort of similar example. I remember when John Calipari had it rolling at Memphis, and they were that close to winning – yeah, a national title. I remember thinking, you know, you're in a league that you can dominate. You don't have to deal with all the the stuff that you deal with competing in the SEC. And he made the opposite choice. No, Kentucky is is again that's a different animal. So it's not apples to apples. But there's a coach who had it going where he was. Although Memphis is a pretty high pressure place too. You can ask yeah. Penny Hardaway about that. So you know, you just you never know. Cal was younger too, uh, and that that has to be a factor. But Let's talk about Nate Oates for a minute, uh, which Nate Oates on Twitter after losing to Georgia was kind of an interesting Twitter search. I'm not saying Alabama fans have turned on him, but certainly they're frustrated. And here's what I want to connect the dots a little bit to football. You look at what has happened with Auburn football. Is Nick Saban has come in and been the greatest coach in the history of college football with apologies to, to Bear Bryant. He just is. And you've seen how crazy that has made it at Auburn. Um, you go through these cycles, you win, you win national titles or, and SEC titles, and a couple years later it, it sort of burns itself down through the pressure and, and whatever else. Um, Auburn's got a leg up for the moment on them. And basketball is starting to really matter in that state. You see sellout crowds in those gyms. And I wonder if you're Nate Oates – Say they they win a natty this year at Auburn. 
D- does it cross your mind for a minute as crazy as those rivalries are in that state that your opponent's got a leg up on you and, and maybe now's the time to to get out while it's hot? Now, now look, that that is that is me being completely speculative. That is not me endorsing that view. I think Alabama's a great job. I think he's done a phenomenal job there. And he's been the coach of the year in his league three out of his six complete seasons. Again, none of that's an endorsement, but is that something you think about given the white-hot intensity of the rivalry and given where Auburn is? Well, and I think the football thing is interesting because so many people like to push the idea that a coach automatically wants to leave a school where a, a basketball program may be second to a football program to go to a school where the basketball program is ahead of the football program, right? Yeah. I think that is very overblown at times. <laughs> um, well, and, with, with that comes a lot of pressure, right? Right, exactly. And that becomes much that becomes a much different discussion. And I, I think that sometimes there is something to that, and we've seen that happen with coaches before, and I'm sure if I sat down for five minutes, I could probably make a list. But I also think that there is something to where that just can be overplayed. And I think, again, and from a pressure standpoint, right, is there more pressure at Auburn right now, or is there going to be more pressure as the guy that's supposed to step into Louisville, or, Al- or excuse me, or Alabama or Auburn, either one? or the guy to have to step into Louisville and to take them yeah. back to where Rick Pitino had them in the top five every single year. Yeah. And by the way, you're trying to also outdo John Calipari every single season. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a tough job. And so I don't, I think there will be plenty of candidates for the Louisville job, but I also think that there, there is a lot, it's a lot more complicated than it would have been what a decade ago or more, whatever uh, that all runs together at this point. I think it's a very, you know, it's a complicated thing. And, and oh, by the way, and I know this may not make ACC fans happy. The SEC at this very moment is a is better, better basketball than conference the, than, the, yes, than the ACC. This year. Yeah, this year, right? And that's, I just want to point that out. And, and that historically, that's not been the case. Although, I think you could argue last year it was better um, as well. So is that becoming a trend? Or is that just a two-year one of those things? Because if you look yeah. at the ACC, and remember, no Roy Williams, no Coach K after this year the ACC becomes a much different landscape. And so I think there is something to the idea that, again, why are these SEC coaches being mentioned? Because the SEC has become one of the top basketball leagues in the country, and some of these programs, like Auburn, like Alabama, again, if you want to throw LSU in there, they've got regular season titles over the past couple years. I know the stuff with Will Wade. Everyone will, will make their points about that. But it's like, these programs are way further along than they were before. Everybody said you couldn't win at places where you have football first, and people are proving that you can. So this is going to be a lot of fun to see how this plays out. And, again, I think this is just – this comes with the territory now. If you're a successful SEC basketball team, your coach is going to be mentioned in some of these high-profile jobs because that's where these programs have been built to at this point. Well, we've got about two minutes left before I've got to fly. We'll are wait you flying to, to Louisville? Uh, not, not yet. Uh, I've not been asked. <laughs> I can drive to Louisville, by the way. Yes. I think it would take me longer to get to the airport and check in and fly than it would to drive. <laughs> Probably but, true. Uh, and all that. But seriously, Will Wade's name pops up. And, and I know the rules are different now. Maybe you can argue there are no rules. But how ironic would it be if Will Wade took that job, given what Rick Patino was run out for? Um, well, and I'm not saying that was unfair, but – my, how the world of college basketball and ethics have changed in a hurry. Well, I say this, and I've always said it. I know the stuff that we talked about. Basketball-wise, Will Wade's a heck of a basketball coach. Yes. Um, but, I, and again, it's it's about the visual, though. And yeah. I think that's where for Louisville, and, and that's what you have to think about, too, is Louisville went, they got Chris Mack, right? Someone who comes out of Xavier, which at that point was really, like you said, I mean, it was a program that just had reached a level it had not reached before. And so now, okay, like, do we do we keep going even higher now? And, and they're going to go after these top names. And and maybe it is the Kenny Payne thing. I think that's the one that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Just because you have someone that knows Cal too, right? It's like, okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna outdo Cal in our own state. Yep. He knows him, and he has these connections and all this other stuff. So ultimately, I think Kenny Payne's the name that makes the most sense for Louisville. 
I don't necessarily think it's going to be any of these guys we mentioned in the SEC, but it is interesting to speculate on. Well, circling back, one more thing on Will Wade. Basketball is the third biggest thing at LSU. Yeah, true. You know, if, if Louisville comes calling, um, much different situation. Good point. I don't think it's going to happen, but that is no. That I, is I don't either. And out. he's he has sort of become the Darth Vader of SEC basketball. Ironically, you and I both know people who know him and like him. Um, he enjoys that, I, I would think, because he's yeah, winning. He's, he's made I mean, it a thing. Winning, yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> you're winning. Maybe so. you take on a different persona at Louisville, but um, yeah, it's it's been interesting to watch that happen. Okay. Thanks for watching. We've got plenty more videos coming up here at Southeastern 14. If you're watching, be sure to subscribe. That helps us out, and we'll check in with you again very soon.